Hey everybody, uh, I thought we'd do something a little different, or I guess on a theme of what we did uh, yesterday with the rock and hand mining. Hopefully this one will be a little bit less disastrous, but I thought that I would uh, show you prospector mining and head out to the Iron Halo, just kind of show you how to find it. Um, there was a short time where they were saying they were going to work on the Iron Halo, so apparently if you look at the map you can kind of see well it's not even popping up now the urn halo lies right in between crusader's orbit and arc corp's orbit so it basically separates hurston and crusader from arc corp and microtech um let's see if i can get an angle and see if it'll pop up it doesn't look like it's going to uh, and in theory, it is so dense that you can't fly through it. So the people of Stanton, uh, the whole system, built these huge gates that I would assume that you could travel to the gate and then they've kind of cleared a hole through the air and halo through all the asteroids and then you could just quantum straight through knowing you wouldn't hit a rock. Otherwise, you hit the edge of the air and halo and then you have to manually fly through this much space which is large uh, because there's a reason they call it space uh, but that hasn't happened yet so right now it's just kind of this random area where asteroids spawn um, and one of the good things about it is that it spawns a lot of quantanium so that is what we're going to be doing today so this is my prospector here um, I set mine up a little differently than most people I think uh, I always go with all grade A stealth components, and I'm not even sure that's in the game to the point where it's effective yet, but it gives me peace of mind that, in theory, my signature is a little less detectable by other ships, so if they're not picking me up at 5,000, then I'm a little safer than the regular prospector that pulling a name out of the has being picked up at seven to 10,000. So... Uh, people don't necessarily know where to find you. When you're mining out in the air in Halo, it doesn't matter. Somebody would have to be very, very, very lucky to be able to find you. So that's kind of how I have the basic components set up, is uh, Stealth Grade A. Uh, those remain, even if your ship's blown up, uh, as does your mining laser, which I run a Lancet. That's pretty common. The place where I'm a little different, and I'll have to look at this... Uh, I run the FTCXL, I think it's an FTCXL, something like that. It gives you a big, when you break the rock, it gives you less um, inert materials. And so you get a lot more bang for your buck when you break the rock. I have another one that lowers the resistance of the rock and another one that expands the window that you can break. Now, the good thing about those, uh, oh, and if you lose the ship, you lose these consumables. Uh, so you keep the laser, but you lose these, and these can be real expensive. So as a miner, that's kind of where your money goes. Uh, just if you're used to being able to reclaim your ship and all the stuff you put on it are, is still on it, that won't happen with those consumables and modules. Um, your laser will stick, but those modules won't. And those modules are real pricey, but you kind of need them to do quantanium mining. If you're not doing quantanium mining, not as big a deal. Hello. Sure How you now, I like to set up this a little differently. Oh. Here. Yeah, it's trying to grab the thing. This is new, this patch where you can't actually touch these because it's trying to touch a button. Let's see if I tilt my head sideways. Nah, it's trying to touch a button. Not a big deal. Um, I'll usually have my, I'll have like um, my self status, the enemy status, comms, and then shields. Shields, especially, just so that I know where I'm at. Um, especially if something blows up on me. Um, this will work. It's not a big deal. I can just look up if I need to see that information. So, 
the most important part of getting to the Iron Halo. Right now we're at the Ambitious Dream, uh, which is right here by Crusader. And what we're going to aim for is Arc L3. And you can see that this is, if we were going to travel that entire distance, um, it's 347 fuel. We're not going to do that. We're going to go roughly about here. It's going to be about 6 million, um, 6 million K. So, Dirty, it's back behind us. So we'll take off, put our gear up, and we'll get going. Uh, another thing I do is I pull the guns on this, which also helps with my signature, because if you are fighting in a prospector, you are definitely doing it wrong. Uh, a prospector, even if you put good guns on it, like a badger or something like that, it's not going to make a difference. You're, you're not going to be able to take out someone that's flying even a basic con combat ship, like somebody running an Aurora Legionnaire, which is the combat version. Um, yeah, it, you're not going to do anything. So you can see Arc L3, which is ostensibly where we're going, is 18 million away. We're only going 6 million. So this is one of those things where you kind of need to pay attention. So when we hit around 12 million, we're going to drop out and we're going to see what's going on. So let's go. I'll just do this live. Uh, so yeah, I, I pull the guns. I'll I'll just show you. You can see there's there's no guns at all on the front of this thing. They would uh, normally be just um, just aft of the mining laser. That those little circles that are down underneath the door. That's where the guns usually are. And there is no reason to run guns on this thing. They're size ones. What are you gonna do? Um, you're just you're just gonna piss someone off, and they're really gonna want to kill you. <laughs> you don't even have missiles. Um, you do have 48 decoys and noise, so you can get away. But with the prospector, I found your best defense is to not be found. And if you are, run as fast as you can. This ship is not super maneuverable or quick to accelerate, so you're probably screwed. You're better off just if they give you a chance to just sort of say, hey, I will give you money to not kill me. So we're getting close now. We've got a million now. I'm going to drop out at exactly 12, and we'll take a look. There we go. You see how there's rocks all around us? So we're good. Now, since we're doing plantanium mining, I'm going to come to a quick stop here because we want to go to Arc L1 because it's closer. So I'm going to set that right now in the um, as my quantum indicator, and I'm going to do that for two reasons. So I'm going to turn off my quantum drive. So now, not only do I have that preset, so the second one of the tricks with quantum uh, mining Quantanium is that you've got a very limited time. You can see up here it, you can eject um, volatile materials. Quantanium is the volatile material. If you leave it in your ship and that light starts flashing, your ship's about to blow up. So you got to void your entire tank. So all of the time that you just spent mining, you're just screwed. Uh, you lost it all. But um, if you dump your cargo, at least your ship survives, and then you can go out and mine more and hopefully next time not do it. But the trick is, once you mine that Quantanium, you've got a very limited amount of time. So, this is the Air and Halo. Uh, you can see lots of hits out here. Um, so we're just going to pick one. Not all of these will be quantanium but some of them will be like your your odds of finding quantanium out here the reason people mine in the air and halo is not only because quantanium is pretty common out here 
but also because it's very hard for people to find you. Like, somebody would have to time inting their quantum drive at exactly the right point, and that isn't real likely. Um, but anyway, so once you mine the quantanium, a timer starts sticking down, and then you've got a very limited amount of time to get back to the refinery and start refining the goods before it blows up. So I put the uh, quantum location, which you can see right there, in ahead of time. And that helps me in two ways that I don't have to go into the map, set the map location, and then spool up and do it. I can just, I, I know where it is, and I can just head there. Um, the other advantage is that you can see that there's no landmarks. We're in, we're in space. So if I didn't have that marker there, I wouldn't know the direction that I came from. So this way I can travel in a single direction, kind of that away, and keep that at my back. And I know that I'm not covering rocks that I've already seen. So we're going to scan this. It's doing its little thing where it's not telling me what the rock actually is. So let's get a little bit closer. And it's already purple. So in theory, I could just mine this as is. I don't trust that at all. Let's risk it. This is gold and bores and corundum. You can sort of see it right there. It's telling us on the rock. Um, you can you can find some things out here that are decent, but we're we're out here to go quantanium mining. We're not here to get bores and crap up there. So let me look. That's more or less behind us. So let's we'll go towards this one and we'll go towards that one. And this is one of the little tricks to mining is. Um, being patient just kind of enjoy the ride come out if that's a rock and that's a rock and that's a rock we could be coming up on one for whatever reason it tends to spawn or at least last time i did this it tends to spawn quantanium in clusters so if you see a cluster of five to six rocks uh there is a good chance at least a couple of them will be good quantanium rocks uh so let's go ahead and look close on this one. I like to angle a little bit off of its hit just in case. There we go. And you do need to be a little bit closer. People were saying this was broken. I don't think it's broken. I just think they're not getting close enough. So if you look right here, that right there is kind of how close you're getting to the signal strength. People are trying to scan like back here, which worked a few patches ago but doesn't really work now and then you do the actual scan on it starts picking up the information so this is aluminum titanium and corundum so again not great i know we had one right over here so i mean if you want to one of the good things about mining is um like i was saying yesterday during the rock mining video it's free money so you're just you're not outside of the um outside of the modules and stuff you're not really putting any money into this if you own the ship then you own the ship there's no more money you're putting into it everything that you mine is worth something but Got a medical rescue there. We could do that. I did pack my medical gear just in case, but we're gonna do this, damn it. Okay, so this is three, this is good. Uh, but everything you get is worth something. It's just there are other things that are worth a lot more. So it's more worth your time to go for the big expensive stuff if you're actually trying to make a lot of money. Come on, scan that. This is one of the problems with the Aaron Halo, is that you can get rocks that are bugged. Like these, where you can't scan them. And usually, 
least what it used to do, that would mean that somebody else had already scanned them. Yeah, so it's not even trying to scan them. Sometimes you can get around that by uh, mining and looking at it. And then hitting it with a laser for whatever reason, sometimes that works. Oh, and okay, so this is, yeah, so these aren't going to work. These are fun. Uh, when you come across rocks that you can't scan, generally just leave them and go to the next one. There's odds that they were something incredible, but you're not going to be able to scan them. You're not going to be able to break them. Move on. Uh, there's lots of rocks in the Arenala. So these are my modules right here. These are the ones that I run. So uh, this one filters inert materials. This one lowers resistance. And this one raises the optimal window. I think this ups the instability, which does make it a little bit harder, but now this curtain point doesn't matter. Sure my back, it is. Okay, let's go by these guys. All right, on to the next one. We've got a few above us, but let's just keep going. Um, it's all kind of relative. So, you just kind of go in a straight line. Oh, hang on. Those are the ones. Those are the ones that we just saw. Okay. And I'm not sure if there's a workaround on that no scan thing. There didn't used to be. Um, usually, things you can try are shutting your engines on and off. Sometimes that does a trick for some of these things. Never worked for this particular bug. Um, but again, someone might have come up with a workaround since the last time I mined. I'm rolling up on this. Again, this is looking like a three. I think it's these three right up here. It sucks that could be in business. we got another one over there that we can hit. Check out these rocks. And again, Mining is one of those things where it helps to be patient. Um, knowing what you're looking for is important, the right rocks, but it's also important to just kind of say, you know, that rock, it's good. It's got like 2% plantanium, but I think I could find a better one. And then <clears throat> flying out and trying to find that better rock and it's a gamble because you might find a great rock and then not be able to find it again so again the solo rock usually means that they're not particularly good but we will at least check this Okay, we can scan this one, that feels good. So that one's Hephaestonite and Tungsten. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is uh, do a quick cut. When I find a good cluster of Plantanium, I'll bring you guys back. So, see you in a few. Okay, so we found our first Plantanium rock. So this one is 7.34, which, um, not bad um again i i haven't gone out prospector mining in a little while so it could be that they drop the percentages because you can find quantanium rocks that are upwards of 20 percent which is a ridiculous amount of money that you can make off of them uh one of the things i like to do is come in a bit closer because something they implemented a couple patches back is there can be hand mineables on these things and they're almost always hidden height. So um, again, it kind of comes down to how much time you want to spend and time is money and all that. Uh, they'll usually be hiding in the little nooks like right if you look at that little spot right there, that's usually where they'll hide them. Um, but 
yeah, you, you always want to double check. And again, like I said, time is money. So if you want to spend the time hand mining, it can be worth it just because they'll, um, the Haydenite's valuable. And I mean, you can make an extra 20 or 30 K just popping the little rocks by hand and then getting back in your ship and uh, breaking the actual rock. If you break the rock first, um, it won't work. Now I want to see if the gimbal trick works. Yes, yeah, so the gimbal trick doesn't work. That was one of the reasons that I kind of went away from it. Um, so mining. Uh, so quantanium, 7.33%. This is a, so I'm just going to kind of grab my mouse here. Uh, the big important things is right here, effective range. So we want to move a hair closer until so it says optimal. So you see how it switched from sufficient to optimal, especially with some rocks, you can get away for, with it and it doesn't really matter. Uh, with quantanium, it, it matters. The, the closer you are, the faster that rock is going to pop. The other things to keep in mind are the mass. 5,000 might be a bit too large for my setup to crack, but we'll, we'll give it a shot. It just might take a little while. And then this is what you get inside of it. So quartz and barrel are real common with quantanium rocks. Uh, but what we're really looking for is the quantanium. So hopefully what we get is a good break where most of the quantanium is in like one or two rocks. Um, preferably, normally what I would do is I would keep looking until I found a bunch of rocks that had quantanium in them in a cluster. Um, because once you start mining that quantanium, the countdown starts to starts ticking away on that volatile so if you've got a bunch of rocks you break them all and you grab all that quantanium then you'll fill up your hold and it's woo, great times uh if you don't do that if you break ro one rock and start hoovering up the quantanium and you haven't broken the other rock yet that countdown has already started so by the time you've broken the other rock and broken the sub rocks uh your time is almost up and you're in trouble so we're gonna go ahead and start breaking this one so i like to use the mouse on this uh the purple actually does have a little mouse wheel built into it but um i'll use that if i'm doing regular mining but with quantanium the the mouse is just too it's much more accurate so what we're going to do is we're going to slowly build up and you'll notice the instability on Quantanium. It's going to be jumping all over the place. And we're trying to keep it in this window. Um, it can be real tedious because it'll, uh, with most rocks, it gradually climbs. You just kind of need to keep an eye on it. And when it starts getting up here, there might be a little fluctuation, but not much. Quantanium is real unstable. So you might have it here and all of a sudden and not be touching the dial at all and it'll just start dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping and you could kick it up to 100% and it'll just stay down here and then all of a sudden it'll start leaping back up so hopefully we'll see some of oh, actually hopefully we won't see any of that because I'd like to have kind of an easy ride on this so we're going to start kicking this up so what we're trying to see yeah so we've already got climbing on this so that's that's good that means that we have enough energy to impact this rock at all um there are some people out there, like uh, Night55, one of my good friends. Um, oh, something else I want to show you. So you'll notice once I start hitting it with the beam. Okay, so you see how the optimal window is this big? When I start hitting it with the beam, and we start kicking this up, see how the optimal window there just grew? That is my modules kicking in and making that window bigger um, it's also lowering the resistance and when it cracks we're not going to have as much um, inert materials or you can sort of see how almost 70 percent of this rock is inert materials um, that's hopefully it'll crack like inert materials off in big chunks and we can just ignore those chunks 
And sometimes what you can do is overheat the inert chunks and just blow them up so they're not blocking your path. Uh, so you can notice that this is a little bit slower. We are currently 21 meters if you look in the upper left under a mining laser. Um, so I can go a little bit closer to this thing. Just keep in mind when quantanium rocks blow up, they can blow up big. So the closer you are, the little more worrying it is. Uh, one thing I can do now is see if my key bindings are still set. No, they aren't. So usually I have a key binding for shields and I'll front load my shields so that if it does blow up, if there's some sort of lag spike, it it's mostly taken on the shields. Although when a quantanium rock blows up, you're you're going to take a lot of damage, especially when you're sitting this close to it, which you have to be to crack the rock. Okay, and I'll be back in a couple seconds when it hits that optimal window. Like I said, uh, some people, oh, what I was telling you about Night 55 is he likes to just crash that up as fast as possible, get in the optimal window, and then it'll lower it down and just kind of keep it from there. I found that that kind of... You can do it that way, uh, but it can make things real unstable and it's a hell of a gamble. I like to slow walk it up and then once I've got it in that optimal window, you just know that you have more control. Um, if you run the Helix, Helixes run a lot hotter so they dump a lot more energy in, but it increases the instability of the rock. So I tend to go with Lancets because they open that optimal window. Okay, I'll be back when I get this thing in the optimal window and it's almost broken and we'll, we'll go from there. Okay, so real quick, this is the way I like to do it. As you can see, that it's just pickling the optimal range and climbing real slow. Now we're going to start backing it off just a little bit. And we don't want to do too much because, again, Quantanium is pretty unstable. We're going to keep an eye on it. And right about here, we're going to start backing up a little bit because we've got enough energy into it. There we go. Cracked our rock. So now we got to look at these individual rocks. Hope we don't get a bug. So you can sort of see how small the optimal window is there. We, whoa, let's turn that off. We know we've got quantanium in that one because the optimal window is low. So if we look at this one, optimal window is huge on this one. So we know the quantanium isn't there. So you see it's barrel and quartz. And we're going to look at this one. And again, optimal window is huge, so we know it's not there. And look at this one, same thing. Optimal window is big, you can just go on here. Optimal window is little. So right now we know we have quantanium there and there, which is important. Now we're gonna look at this one. Big window, we don't care about it. So now that we know which rocks we're going to do, so you can see that there is a yellow line, a yellow highlight around that rock and that rock. That means that we need to break them up again to make them a little bit smaller. Um, and what we're going to do, what I'm going to do, is I'm going to break both of them before I start hoovering them up. And so the reason I'm doing that is so that I have the quantanium is already separated. Again, if I were to break this rock, hoover up the quantanium, and then come over and break this rock, the countdown's already started the first time I hoover up any quantanium off this one. So I have less time to do this and get back to the station. And you don't want to do that. That's where people screw up the quantanium. So we break these two rocks first, hoover out the quantanium, and then we fly back immediately. So uh, I'll be back in just a minute. I'm going to go ahead and break both of these rocks and then just show you what that looks like. Okay, so I lied. One thing I want to show you here. Okay, so one thing I like to do is look at these rocks after I break them, just because sometimes it'll bug and you won't know which rocks are actually the valuable ones like it'll do that scanning bug on these i think they fixed that but um i'm i'm mostly doing this the way that i used to do it 
there another rock behind that or is that just shadow i think that's just shadow so that one's almost 50 percent quantanium it's 274 mass which it's not a lot of quantanium but like again it, it's money so i even a little bit of quantanium is valuable that one i wouldn't say it's useless but you wouldn't want to hoover it uh something i'll do is after i grab the quantanium I will sometimes grab everything else just to fill my hold uh, just to kind of okay so you can see that one isn't scanning Let's try move a little closer so the good thing I did so that one's 25% quantum so our valuable rocks are this one and that one those are the two that we want um, so now we're gonna break the second one so this one I'm going to do live just so that you can sort of see the process of breaking up the rock. Um, and again, you'll get an idea for it's, it's zen-like, but you'll see quantanium is a lot more unstable. Again, if you have not mined before, quantanium is not the rock to start with. So you can see how it's going up, but how it's going up and down. So the two things you want to uh, sort of keep your eye on laser intensity over on the left side is how much energy you're dumping into the rock obviously you probably know that and the charge level is where you want to get it and again I like to slow walk it some people just like to punch it into the optimal as fast as possible and I find it's a little bit harder to get the rock back under control that way and plus this way I know for example, at 25% is the slow climb. If I were just to kick it up to 100%, I wouldn't know that 25% was kind of my target number. So now we're getting close to the optimal. Now it's tickling. Now I need to back off and wait for it to drop a little bit. Now it's dropping too fast. Now I kick it back up. Now it's raising a little bit too fast, so I'm going to back it off. And we're seeing about the middle. I just kind of want to keep so you see it does that so um, again this can overheat very quickly so better to just kind of start from scratch so again I know that 24 is sort of my golden spot we had a little bit of a lag spike there which is worrying or it might have just been so it's not a bad one there we go so we've got them all broken now. So now we need to figure out which ones are our good rocks. This one is not scanning. Sometimes when they're moving, it won't scan them. Um, there we go. Flag yeah. issue. So that one's 15% quantanium. That's a good one. Look at this one. Again, I, I just realized I switched it to 21%. Uh, Mode keep on. Mining mode. This one is quartz and inert. Obviously, you don't want anything that has inert. And quartz and 52% quantanium. So uh, that's a good rock. That's a good rock. That's a good rock. That's a good rock. And that's a good rock. Um, Generally, anything more than like 10% quantanium on a break is going to net you a decent amount of money. Um, so let's go ahead and start hoovering. We're going to switch over to extraction mode. Very important. So I like to start with the biggest rock with the most quantanium, which I think is this one. Yeah, so this one's 278, and over half of it is quantanium. So we're going to start going there. Now, if you look right up here, this is, we've got 32 SEU of room. You're going to start seeing that fill up, and the goal is to fill it with as much quantanium as possible. So let's go ahead and start going. So there you can see it's picking up. If we're doing our job right, we end up with a lot more quantanium than in it. So that wasn't bad. We got five um, 
got five SEU of Quantanium. Uh, this one's only two, which I don't particularly want that. Yeah, so these are smaller breaks than this. That one's too too. Oh, I kind of screwed up there, but let's see. This one out, 21% there. This one's 18. So you can see there's a lot of inert on this, but we're still getting like three, four SEU of Quantanium. Uh, this one's 43%, so we're gonna grab this. Hopefully we will surpass the inert. I do have that inert breaker. It looks like they might have chilled it out a little bit. Right, grab this one. I think that was our last rock. So we've got seven SEU of Quantanium. Do a quick look at the rocks just to make sure that I'm not leaving something on the table here, which I don't think I am. Those quartz. Those quartz. Okay, we're good. So we shut that off, kick on the quantum drive, and now we turn for home. So we're coming back up here. Uh, not a great haul. Uh, again, you typically want to load it up. Um, you'd want a full cargo load of mostly quantanium. You're going to make a lot of money. So I already set Cruel one as uh, my destination before I went, and this is why. So you can see nothing's beeping yet. We're 6 million, which we know isn't a super long jump. So we're going to come in uh, pretty hot on Cruel one um, just to make sure that I land with the most time possible. Reset my track IR. There we go. And uh, this is kind of the nail biter game. Now, one of the cool things is is that even though a prospector is a single um, single seat ship, uh, you can go out as a pair of prospectors, you and a friend. And if you find a good cluster, if you find a good cluster yourself, um, you're going to lose a lot of quantanium because you're going to fill up your hold, and there's going to be like six rocks there with 50% quantanium, and you just lost them. Uh, you're, you're probably never going to find that spot again. But if you have two of you, one of you can stay there while the other one runs back, uh, refines the quantanium, and jumps back. And then the other person just kind of tag teams. They start hoovering up all the quantum rocks and head back while you stay there. And you can kind of tag team that way. And that is an extremely efficient way to mine with two people. Um, even in a mole, you can't really do that, although a mole holds a lot more rocks, so you don't generally have to. You just break all the rocks and the mole can carry it all. Uh, but if you've just got prospectors, you just rented them. Well, if you rent them, the regular laser is not what you'd want to use. Um, a lancet is generally what I use. But yeah, if you've got two, two people with prospectors tag teaming a cluster of rocks, you're going to have a good day. Okay, here we are. We're coming up on uh, Quilla 1. And I will just play through this one in real time, just to kind of show you how I handle it. Pay attention to my velocity because it's going to be going up fast. So I need to get around this rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, we need to wait for the cooldown. There we go. Get that up. Again, I have a grade A stealth jump drive so it kicks things up now i'm going to kick my velocity all the way up at cruel l1 the place where you will be landing is below the ring so you can kind of see this little sort of three piece set down below uh do remember that prospectors are not the most agile chips in the verse uh, don't panic at this point. Um, so you can see that I kick my velocity back down once I cross the threshold. Uh, there's there's a good reason for that. And I believe we got another person here. A Pisces. Okay, so that's just someone running box missions. So there's our ATC. We should get one right in front of us. That should be our right spot right there. Bank. Yep, there we go. Pick it up a little bit. Um, 
But just remember the prospector isn't super maneuverable. It won't stop on a dime. So if you're going full speed here, you're going to overshoot the whole station. You're going to have to come back and kill yourself sometime. So uh, again, with um, Plantanium, time's money, and it's, it's a real dangerous game. So better to nail it right the first time. I generally don't go VTOL when I'm coming into a station because you want forward momentum to be better. Uh, the engines on the Prospector actually rotate down. So here we're coming in for a nice landing. Make sure that I'm actually within the pad so that we can store. There we go. Bring it down. Don't bring it down too hard. That is a trick. And we're down. One thing I like to do real quick is just make sure my gear is down because they complete. Have a pleasant stay. Wait for that. Once you hear that, so now we're gonna go out. So um yeah, again at this point, this can be a little bit of a dangerous game in the current patch because you can die running upstairs, you can be crushed by the elevator, uh all sorts of things can go wrong. So I kind of this is a real iffy patch to do mining in. Okay, did you hear that little sound like a little cricket noise? That is the warning coming on that we're, we're running out of time. So what I would suggest doing, at least in 371, I would assume that in 372 they've got this part punched. Okay, elevator's called. I'm going to back off because sometimes the elevator comes through the room and it'll actually push you through the floor. And then you're going to be in the geometry of the station and you're just screwed. Uh, your ship's going to blow up. You can't do anything. You're going to respawn at the regular place. You're just screwed. Um, this is kind of the nail biting part, especially if you're pushing it. Because waiting on this elevator and then getting back to the lobby is going to eat some time. So, yeah. Good time to eat your nails. Uh, so again, like I did yesterday when I landed, uh, during the rock mining example, the second we get in here, we're going to store our ship, and that's pretty important. So that stops the clock. I don't know if that will always be the case. I would be surprised if it is, but if it is, then uh, it's a good way to stop the clock. So we're going to run up here. Welcome to the ASOP Vehicle Retrieval this System. This is all working. Come down, look at our prospector, which is a miss. Of course, it's a ways down. So, we're looking for this one right here. Open the store, make sure I'm not blocking it. Wait and make sure it actually stores it. This flame goes to retrieve, we're good. So now, we don't need to worry about the clock anymore. Bye. So we don't need to run anymore and blow our, blow our water reserves. We can just kind of walk at a sedate path. Moonwalkers. Um, so I guess while we're going down to the refinery, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about where I think mining is heading next. So right now, there's not really a need for the mole. I'm hoping what they do, because you can, you can break the same rocks with the prospector, especially a prospector with um, with the right setup, especially if you've got the consumables, which I'll show you when we get to the refinery store. Um, they've got consumables in this one where you can lower the resistance of rocks and everything else. So we're going to the refinery. And again, you've got to be at the L1 stations in order to refine stuff. Or I think any of the LaGrange stations, but especially the L1s, are their refinery stations. But anyway, there's not really a reason to fly a mole right now unless you just want to tool around with a couple of friends in a single ship and mine. And you want to be in a single ship, you can only do that in a mole. Um, it's more efficient to do it in two prospectors right now. Uh, what I'm thinking they're going to have to do is have rocks that are enormous so right now you kind of have these house size rocks that the prospector can break uh you're gonna have to have 
building size rocks that only three lasers, three size two lasers, uh, lasers on the prospector size one, lasers on the molar size two. They're going to need at least two size two lasers to break those rocks. Um, and if they do that, then the mole has a purpose because prospectors, even if they have fully kitted out and they've got like six of them charging rock, it's, it's not going to break. Someone from accounts, it. please contact management. Accounts, contact management. Thank Thank you. Their, account. their accounts suck. But, um, yeah, so let's go to the store first. I'll finish off this thought. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's kind of a big deal because the mole is kind of useless right now. I mean, you can take it out, but and it's fun, but there's not really a lot of purpose to it. Let's see, this guy talks to me. Hi, good to have you back. Good to have you back. See anything uh, you like? No. Um, I am going to grab some water while I'm here. Uh, but this is going to really start mattering when you have something like the, um, like the Orion. Because the Orion is a capital class ship, so you better have you better have rocks that are enormous at that stage that only the Orion can have it. Because I mean, if it's something that you can do, oh, oh, not that one, this one. If you have rocks that can be broken by a bunch of prospectors, people are just going to take the prospectors out because there's less to risk. Um, another thing that I hope they do, especially with the mole and maybe the prospector too just to kind of we just got a few new items in so um make sure to check them out move away from him so he stops talking to us um to make it once once they implement that to make the mole or the prospector relevant because the orion will be able to mine those little ships too of course not everybody will be able to afford orion and that's or where the cost benefit goes. But both the mole and the prospector have engines that can VTOL, and the Orion, as far as we know, can't enter atmosphere. Or if it can, it's going to have a hell of a time getting out. And it's not going to be as maneuverable as either the mole or the uh, prospector who have the VTOL. So what I'm hoping they do is actually start implementing mining veins so you'd actually have a line of rock that once you find it you can blow it up and just kind of carve out a trench um, of certain types of rocks and they've been talking about voxel mining and whether they'd be able to do it or not uh, they're kind of iffy uh, but if they could that would be cool if you just sort of had a little gully there where you mine stuff out and then over time it just fills up, or if you leave the area, it fills it back up. Um, I just think that would be cool. That's where I hope they're going with it, but we haven't heard anything. Okay, so this is what I mean by mining is the deepest uh, deepest game loop in the game right now. So these are hand mineable consumables, or not even hand mineable. You can take these slap them on a rock that you normally wouldn't be able to break and then adjust it and each of these you can sort of see that one has a green screen that one has actually the same with both rhymes oh no no rhymes that um uh, actually not letting me select them but if i go over to the kiosk i could do it there uh but you can sort of see there's a yellow one there's a green one there's a purple one uh they each do different things they can lower the resistance on the rock they can expand the optimal window and I forget what the other one does, uh, resistance, window, and yeah, maybe it's the actual break. But if you have a rock that you can't break with like a helix or something like that, you can get out of your prospector, slap one of these on the rock by hand, and then it lowers the resistance to that rock and you can break it that way. So lots of options. It's a very deep game loop. And then you can sort of see that these are the modules. Some of these are consumables that once you use them, none of the ones that I have are consumables. Um, but for example, you have uh, a consumable that's called Stampede, that when you hit the rock, it jumps the energy up by a pretty good fraction, uh, but you can only use it so many times before it's useless. Uh, so those are the modules and the um, 
what the name of them is. Those things. Well, hand mineable consumables. Or minor tool things. Anyway, uh, so selling ore, there's two options. I'm going to go the short route, but um, I'll show you the expensive one. So one of the things you can do, you can see that there's kiosks there and there's kiosks here. So you have two options. The first option, the one that you probably want to do is you come up here, click on this one, because you're at ambitious screen. You click begin and hopefully it knows you're there. There we go. So this is kind of, this, this looks pretty gross, but kind of accurate to a mining thing. We're going to do this, select our miss prospector, set the work order, and you can cancel out of this anytime. Um, so what you got going on here is that you can say, I want to use this method to refine this, this, and this. And the more that you are refining, the more different kinds of things, the more expensive it's going to be. Uh, so typically what you want to do is you want to say, well, I didn't want the barrel in the cord, so I'm going to take that out. I just want to do the quantanium. Um, now the method, there's a bunch of different methods here. And basically it's how much you get back versus how much it costs versus how much time. So you can kind of think of it as a triangle where you've got the time it takes, you've got how much your yield is, and um, actually I think that's about it. Unless I'm forgetting something. Um, but you can have it so it takes a long time and you get a high yield. Oh, the cost. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's those three. So you can have it that it it kind of costs a moderate amount and you can have it be slow but you get a big yield or you get a low yield but it's quick or you can have it that it's really slow and you get a low yield and it's cheap or you can get it that it's a high yield um, and high cost basically yeah. so and it'll take a short time the one that I usually do, I think it's Dynex. Okay, so you can see it's very low speed, low cost, but a high yield. That's usually the one I do. So what I'll do is I'll do a few runs like this, and then I'll just at the end of the week, I'll go and I'll collect all of my refined ore and fly it over and sell. Uh, so um, I won't see the profit until the end of the week, but I'm not spending a lot of money to get a high yield. Uh, so let's go back and we'll look at the other ones. Um, so you got this one, low speed, high cost, high yield. Uh, so I don't know why people would select that one. High speed, high key cost, moderate yield. So you can kind of decide what you want. Um, I'm going to cancel out of this because I want to show you this. So if you come over here, if you're just Hi, kind of you just kind of having fun in the verse, Finding everything all right. you can come in here and you can see right there, I'm going to make 32,000 if I sell this unrefined as is. So if I don't go through that process over there, let's back off of this. So that one's 32,000. If I were to refine this up, it would probably be like 70 to 80,000. I'd probably double the value of that run just by being patient. So it's kind of, it's kind of like, how do you want to spend your time? You can do run after run after run and um, just refine them all, kind of like what I usually do, um, and then collect it and do it. That's a little risky because then your ship can be destroyed in transit. You can have a 30K and lose all of that work for the entire week. Um, or you could go this route and it's worth less money, but it's also less risky. So that's kind of, that's kind of star system in a nutshell there is lower money, lower risk, higher money, higher risk. Because all your eggs are in one basket with this one, but you make a lot more money at the end of it. That's mining people. I'm going to do 
low risk for the moment just because, again, I don't need the money. And I also don't want to waste the space on my prospector because I want to go and mine on Daymar after this. So there we go. We did it. We made 30K for probably, honestly, if I didn't, if I were just going out there, not jabbering, not doing this, I'd probably do that in 30 minutes, make 30K. Not bad. That's kind of how they work. And if I'd filled up my hold, keep in mind that that was only half my hold with Quantanium, if I totally filled it up, you're looking at easily 70k. And so that's why people kind of say you want to make money in this game, you mine Quantanium. So that's it, people. I uh, hope that helps you. If you have any questions, put them in the down below part and let me know. See you next time.